we need to think of a new advert for freebets.com. Get your best betting offers from freebets.com. Yeah, that'll do. The following deals are now live. This is Lewis Hart for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store, Forged Irish, out on freebets.com. Delighted to be joined with Eddie Hearn. We're in Orlando, you know, miracles happen where dreams come true. Paddy McCoy will be looking for a dream to come through tomorrow night against Edgar Balanga. Um, made weight today, lively atmosphere out there, very, very good. Really good atmosphere. I mean, it's a massive fight for Edgar. It's a massive fight. Is that, you know, yeah, there you go. Um, massive fight for Edgar, massive fight for Poddy McCrory, fantastic card as well. Two huge punches. And Balanga needs a big statement. You know, I think he needs to make sure that he looks good tomorrow night so I can keep calling out these big fights for him. But it's going to be a really exciting fight. Nice uh, mix of the Irish and Puerto, um, first place Puerto Rican fans there. It was uh, good in that, good in that way, and a nice, lively atmosphere. Yeah, we saw that, of course, last time with uh, Taylor against Serrano at Madison Square Garden, and you know, both very passionate fans. We're in a big room at the Caribbean House, about four, four thousand. It's going to be completely rammed and sold out. Be a really good atmosphere, and as I said, a really good card tomorrow, top to bottom. You spoke about at the presser about potentially Edgar being an opponent for Canelo on May the fourth. Um, realistically, do you, do you think that is an option? You'd be confident with Belanga taking on Canelo? I mean, I think it's a big ask, but you know, if he's looking for an opponent and nothing's forthcoming, and Edgar looks sensational tomorrow night, I'm going to call it on. You know, I, I still think Edgar needs a bigger win than Poddy McCrory for everybody to believe he definitely deserves the chance. But if he's a world-class fighter that can punch hard and comes to fight, and it's Mexico against Puerto Rico, why not? If he hasn't got an opponent, but let's see what happens tomorrow night. Also, we saw, I suppose, the press conference for announcing the sign of Sabril Matias. Um, the best kept secret at 140 pounds now finally has a real, real big promoter behind him. Um, you talked about having a conversation there about Tiafimo Lopez at breakfast. Um, how good is it is he, he's going to get this love and going to Puerto Rico that you know, he is going to get the, the eyes that he deserves in a sense? Yeah, I mean, everybody knows how good, how dangerous Sabriel Matias is. But you've got to show the world, and now we can do that. Um, I think we'll take him home to Puerto Rico in June for a big fight, and then we look for a mega fight after that. He's, he's, re he's willing and ready to fight anybody. So, you know, let's, let's showcase him to the world and, and show the world how exciting and how dangerous he is. Realistically, would you like that to be Liam Poro? Yeah, I would. You know, we, we represent Liam. I want to see Liam get a shot at the world title, but it's a tough fight. It's a dangerous fight. He wants as much money as possible, and I understand that. So we're trying to make that work, but if not, there's a lot of guys ready to take that fight. We'll talk about big news that came out today. Um, Pushed hard for the for the press tour of Jack Carroll versus Josh Taylor. Um, a lot of back and forth, slaps, colouring books. So, so the sold out first direct arena. Um, must be buzzing to see that though. It sort of paid off in a sense. Right. You know, a little bit surprised. Sam Jones was right a lot. I knew it would sell out, but I didn't expect it to do it instantly. And it shows you the size of the fight, the success of all British grudge matches, if you like. You know, and and that's uh, to do it at a neutral venue as well is very very impressive. So yeah, we made it nice and cheap, the tickets. I was bollocking everyone this morning saying you should have made it more expensive. Um, and of course, we probably should have put it on pay-per-view. But congratulations to Zone subscribers, non-pay-per-view, an all British mega fight, and uh, can't wait for April 27th. I know there was other interest from other parties like Sky and you know, keeping the uh, potential agendas out of this one. Um, do you feel like when this is under the zone, under a match and banner, you give it the better love than maybe uh, other promotions would? No, I think that we're just better. So, but there's two, you know, Sky is a big platform. Sky is a bigger platform than DAZN for boxing in the UK. But Sky doesn't have Eddie Hearn and Matram. So it weighs itself out. You know, my own platform and Matram's platform, people will watch this and say, oh, it's the truth. You know, you compare that to, I don't know, a Boxer or Ben Shalom's platform. And obviously that makes up the deficit between the two. But Sky's a brilliant outlet, great platform. But, you know, we just nailed this promotion. And it wasn't just me and Matram. Of course, it was more Jack, Josh, even Sam. You know, it was the two city press corps. The way that it was done, it was the slickness of it all. It was the narrative. We, we told the story perfectly. And you see the results. You mentioned there about Sky and, and, and under the, when, when, you had, when you was under Sky. And now, um, they do come under a lot of criticism. And do you feel like Sky missed the, the, the push of yourself and Matram? Of course, everyone knows. Like, but look. I think that there's always new chapters and you know it's, it's, a, it's a new chapter for them, it's a new chapter for us. Um, I'm, I'm sure we miss each other at times. 
you know, they're a massive pay-per-view outlet and at times you want that machinery and artillery behind you and they'll be watching going, I wish we had Eddie Hearn. But sometimes you part ways, you part companies. Um, who knows what happens in the future? We've still got a great relationship with them. We, we deliver the highest viewing figures on the platform outside of Premier League football in darts. I mean, we've got a great relationship and it's not, you know, there's no beef. There's a few things we're always not going to be happy about, but it was time to move on and you know, we're all happy. Well, I'm happy and the zone are very happy and we're flying. Um, yesterday, uh, you did send a little bit of a message to Adam Azim and, and Team Boxer and McGuigan's. Uh, Adam Azim has had his own response in a tweet. Uh, you responded, I suppose I'll read it out. Just got back from holiday in Dubai, and whilst I was gone, a 21 year old Adam Azim has been a hot topic in the UK and the US. Fucking hell, are you all desperate to fight me? I suppose, are you desperate to fight Adam Azim? He said, he said Adam Azim is a hot topic. Yeah, that's what he said. But it's all about himself. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Third person. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was a bit confused. Yeah. Um, That's what he, he tweeted from his account. Whether it was him or not, I don't know. A lot of people want to fight Adam Azim, but there's a difference between wanting to fight you and a fight that has been ordered. You've been ordered to fight Dawn Smith. We're not asking to fight you. You've been ordered to fight him. So you either duck Dawn Smith or you fight him. And that's just a question we're after. That's all. There's no, there's no point in going backwards and forwards. Just give us an answer. Are you going to fight Dawn Smith or are you going to duck him? So, I suppose, do you understand from a matchroom point of view where this fight may be a little bit more suited to Dawn Smith as opposed to Adam Azim at this stage of their career? Because I suppose Dawn's a... Dorton, I, would, I would argue that Dorton has probably beat better competition than, than Adam Azim. So that's what, yeah, but Adam may want more time for it. One of the reasons we're calling the fight out. We win the fight. Adam Azim's not ready for Dawn Smith. That's why I want to do the fight, particularly, because yeah. I know we win. But he's calling out yesterday, he called out, he called out Keyshawn Davis at Wembley Stadium on pay-per-view. I mean, with all due respect to those two fighters, the only way they fight at Wembley Stadium is if they come on half an hour before Taylor Swift, right? So the delusion is unbelievable. So, as I said to you yesterday, I'm not going to keep going on about it, you're going to get yourself in a really sticky situation, an embarrassing situation, if you don't make a decision. Because we've got a fight coming up for March 23rd against Jose Cepeda, which is a very tough fight for Dawn Smith. And that's the focus. But there's going to be a lot of talk about Adam Azim. So I just asked the question, are you going to fight Dawn Smith or are you going to duck him? Just let us know and then we can all move on. Javonte Davis, next opponent, has been announced, Frank Martin. And we know he was talking to Conor Ben. Uh, slightly disappointed, uh, obviously the fight hasn't happened, but to see Frank Martin as well. He's at lightweight, and Javonte is a lightweight, so he's doing it in his weight class. Whether they didn't want to fight at 147, or one, someone convinced him not to take the money against Conor Ben, I don't know. But it's a good fight against Frank Martin. Frank Martin's a decent fighter, but Javonte wins pretty straightforward. Talking about fights that have been ordered, um, well, it hasn't been ordered yet, but Chev Clark against uh, Isaac Chamberlain. Um, is, are you pushing the board, the board for some certain urgency to push that fight? We've, we've asked the board on numerous occasions to mandate it and call it. We've made big offers to Isaac Chamberlain. I think uh, Frank Smith is talking to Ben Shalom about trying to make that fight. It's just another one where it's like, you can't just pretend these things and people don't exist. So it's like Isaac Chamberlain, yeah, we're, uh, the fight's Vidal Riley. No, no, the fight's Chev Clark. He's the mandatory. That's a fantastic fight. Isaac's a great fighter. Chev's only just starting in the program. It's a risky fight, but we love the fight. It's a great fight for British boxing. Stop pretending it doesn't exist. Either vacate the belt or let's make it. Just a final one from me. Uh, I don't know if you would have actually seen this tweet, because it's been a busy week for you, but your good friend Victor Conte uh, tweeted yourself, asking yourself if you wanted, he's willing to sponsor you to get VADA tested to show that you're, uh, to show that you're clean, as, as you always call him, an old geezer. I don't know if you saw that tweet. Or... The, the, I have to be honest with you. You know, I am starting to really become concerned for my own safety when it comes to Victor Conte. I mean, if you actually go through his Twitter feed, it is about three or four times a day he tweets me about stuff. I was going to send him my socks or my soiled underwear, but then I thought that might make it, make it worse. But you do, on a serious note, with high profile people, you do get this stalker thing is a real thing, you know, and it starts as being quite funny, and then it becomes like, I'll drive out of my drive and he'll be there. That's the next stage. Do you know what I mean? He'll be putting things like dead fish and stuff like that through my letterbox. So at the moment it's quite funny, but I am starting to become more concerned. Um, if, if Victor Conte wants to pay for me to go on Varda, that was his offer. Yeah, that was his offer. Yeah, he's willing to sponsor you. Yeah. I accept. So let's set it up. I would like to be tested 
a couple of times a month, randomly, by Varda. He can pay for it all. And don't let Varda pay for it. He has to pay for it. And I want to see the receipts where he's paid for it, because I pay for Varda testing. It's very expensive. Also, if you saw me in my underwear that I may send him, you would definitely not think I needed Varda testing. But we're on the way. So, yes, uh, accepted. But please, before I get a restraining order out on you, go and live your life, and please don't worry about me. Absolutely, Eddie. Thank you for taking time to speak to me. I appreciate it, mate. Top man, thank you.